So this is going to be kind of fun, I think. Um, I've been looking forward to this. I have a, um, I don't want to give away too much, but I have a fun little illustration um, that we're going to do at the end. Um, but first, we got to get there. Who's got a Bible? Did you bring Bibles? Awesome. That's good. Going to Psalm 127 tonight. Psalm 127. Low power mode. <clears throat> All right. It's always good to have your Bible because there's a pen in the seat back in front of you that you can, like, take notes and underline stuff and, and things like that. So that's, that's always a good thing. I'm, I'm trying to teach our youth that that's a good thing. Um, to bring your Bible to church, even though we're going to have it up on the screen. Most of the time, it's not so that you can, like, follow along necessarily, but so that you can, like, actually take notes and take this home with you and um, meditate on it um, throughout the week. So that's that's always a good thing. <coughs> Y'all be praying for me. I've had this cough for, like, I don't know, two months or more. Like, it's crazy, and it's just really annoying, and I want it to go away. So that'd be nice. Um, thank you. Now there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> um, but that's good. All right, so Psalm 127. Um, it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty good, pretty good psalm. I'm going to be reading from the NLT, New Living Translation. It says, starting verse 1, it's a real short psalm. Verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds a house, the workers of, of the builders is wasted. It's kind of confusing. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. We could stay there for a while, couldn't we? That's, I mean, this is, this is really, really good stuff. And this is, I mean, something that, uh, I mean, I learn more and more and more, especially um, as I take on more responsibility when it comes to youth and kids and all of these things. I'm always, I, I always want to get God's vision for whatever I'm doing. And that's not necessarily here at the church when I was working and doing construction. I mean, I had to have vision for whatever I set my mind to do. I I had to have vision from the Lord or else I, I, I understand that that's, it's no good. If I don't have vision from God, I can do whatever my own mind thinks is great. But if, unless I have the Lord working with me, it's, it's no good. And it's interesting, um, Solomon is the one who uh, wrote this psalm. It says it's a psalm of Solomon. Solomon was, I mean, the wisest guy of his time, if not more so. Uh, and, and he's, I mean, he's the one that uh, wrote in Proverbs, um, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. What's that say? Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. It's kind of that, that same type of, of thought process. Trust in the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. Even though Solomon's understanding was huge, it was vast. He knew a lot of stuff. He was very, very wise. But he understood that if I'm going to lean on my own understanding, everything is for nothing. I mean, it's for waste. It's void. It's meaningless. And so I have to have... God's heart on the issue. I have to have God's thoughts on what whatever I'm doing. But we could stay there for a while. We're not going to. We're actually going to talk about. We're gonna we're gonna look at that because that's gonna tie in. But we're going to look at the next um, couple of verses. Verse three. It says, "Children are a gift from the Lord." Wait. Hold on. Is that what Charles Bible say? <laughs> the, does it say children are a gift from the Lord? Some of y'all might say heritage of the Lord. The Amplified, I think, says it's a heritage and a gift from the Lord. Do y'all do y'all agree with that? <laughs> I mean, and be honest, because I work with your kids. I know who they are. 
I work, I work, I mean, with the little ones, with the youth. I, I see them, so I know. <laughs> and some of them, you might actually, you might really have to underline this verse and meditate on this and really get God's heart on the issue. No, I'm just kidding. Your kids are great, and I really enjoy, um, I really enjoy getting to work with them and see them, their progress, and um, just see their different personalities come out and kind of it's really it's really neat now that I'm the next generation pastor so I get to see from elementary and really I mean technically all the way down I mean little little ones all the way up to to graduating high school I get to kind of see this process and it's and it's really it's really cool it's a really neat uh, process of learning and growing and and progress and you know it's it's a it's a really cool um, thing to be a part of so it says that children are a gift from the lord and they are a reward from him did you know so tonight we're going to talk about family we're going to talk about because that's that's just been on my heart for quite a while the family unit the lord's just been just speaking to me so much about uh, the family. And while I am technically over elementary school kids and middle school and high school, you know, that's, that's who I'm, I'm over. The Lord's just teaching me so much about how ineffective I'm going to be if I neglect pastoring the family unit. So if, if I'm focusing my time on, you know, this Sunday morning service and, you know, this Sunday night when we do uh, youth, when we do Kaleo, <coughs> if I'm focusing my time on, on that hour, hour and a half that I have per week, I mean, that's not a whole lot necessarily is, is, is getting done. The real work, the Lord's showing me the real work is done at home. It's done, it's done in, your, in your home. It's done in the house. It's done with the parents. It's done as a family. That's really where the growth happens. That's really where um, these kids, these youth, these teenagers are really getting molded and shaped and influenced is in the house. Of course, there's a lot of time spent at school and, and things like that. But the real ministry, I say happens at home. And so it's my job and the Lord's showing me so much that I need to be partnering with the parents, partnering with the family to grow these students and to grow these kids. I need to be partnering with you guys. So that's why a little plug for Kaleo at the end of the month, we are, uh, we're going to do a parent night. Uh, last Sunday of the month, the 29th, we're going to do a parent night where parents are going to come and uh, we're all going to worship together. The teenagers, their parents, the whole family, we're going to worship together. Um, and then, you know, we're going to kind of split off and we're going to talk about how to actually how to effectively minister to teenagers. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be pretty cool. Something that we're going to implement from time to time, but it's going to start um, the 29th. So. If you have a parent of a teenager, or if you are a parent of a teenager, sorry, no, that's not what I meant. If you are a parent of a teenager, or uh, you know somebody that's a parent of a teenager, um, this is it. This is your announcement. I sent out emails. I'm trying to spread the word, make sure everybody knows, because I really, really think that this is important. So, tonight we're talking about the family. You know that God uh, designed the family unit. You guys know that, right? God designed the family unit. I mean, that's, I think that's pretty clear that, uh, that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and he created all this stuff, everything that we see, all the trees and water and, and dirt and whatever else, he created it all. And then he created Adam. And then he saw that Adam, just by himself, that wasn't a good thing for Adam. And so he created a helper, a companion called Eve. And so all of a sudden we have two, a husband and a wife. And then he said, be fruitful and multiply. And he said, have kids. And that's something that we don't have kids yet, <laughs> but we're going to at some point. So lay off. It's coming. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It'll happen. Okay. It'll happen. Um, 
So the, the Lord created the family unit. And how many of you know that anything that the Lord creates and implements, the devil's going to try and twist? He's going to try and twist that into something it wasn't really created to be. And so I want to set a few ground rules when it comes to family. Some things that I feel like the Lord wants to just kind of set as parameters. <clears throat> this is how the Lord designed family to be. He designed family to be two parents. He designed two parents. And that's difficult to say probably right now because, I mean, a, a single parent household is, is not out of the ordinary in this day and age, in this church, not necessarily out of, out of the ordinary. But just because it's normal in our culture doesn't mean it's normal in the kingdom. And something that I'm really trying to teach to our teenagers is that if it's not normal in the kingdom, it's not normal to me. I want the things that are normal in the kingdom of God to be my normal. And so the normal, normal in the kingdom of God is two parents. Normal in the kingdom of God is one mother and one father. That's normal in the kingdom of God. That's, that's the norm. And so if that's the norm in the kingdom of God, we want that to be the norm for us. So just because you are a single parent doesn't necessarily mean that there's, you know, I mean, that's just kind of the, the cards that you're dealt maybe, and there might be a void or a hole, and that hole, that void is not too big that the Holy Spirit can't fill, so that's, that's good. You have a partner there. You have a helper in the Holy Spirit, so that's a good thing. You got that going for you, but don't, don't let that pass on. Don't, don't let your kids think that that's normal. I just want... I just want people to understand that a single parent household, a divorced household, oftentimes breeds that same type of thing. And so we want to change that culture. We want to shift that mindset. We don't want the, the enemy to be able to twist that for the, the next generation. Like it would be so easy and prone to, to happen. So we want to pass on kingdom normals not worldly normals to our kids so that's that's what we want to do so the lord designed the family designed one father he designed one mother in in the family and each parent has a specific role a lot of times we see these roles kind of getting blended and and, and mixed up sometimes you know and and I don't know, this, this is kind of a little bit uneasy for me to say, uncomfortable, but, you know, sometimes the woman kind of wants to take the man's role in the marriage, and the man wants to take the woman's role in the marriage, and that's not how God designed it to happen. That's not how God designed it. God designed a man to do a man's job and a woman to do a woman's job, and there's specific roles that, and, and that's fine, that's good, that, that needs to happen. That's a good thing. The way God designed it is a good thing. There's nothing weak or insecure or anything like that. That's how God designed it to be. So I want to do, I want to be the man, the husband that God designed me to be. One day I'm going to be the father that God designed me to be. And Mel's going to be the wife that God designed her to be and the mother that God designed her to be. And, and I don't want to get those roles confused. So, so a lot of times, I mean, mothers are, are typically, I mean, they're, they're the nurturer, they're the protector, you know, and, and where there's like uh, somebody, that, their kids might fall down and scrape their knee and, and dad comes in and says, ah, suck it up, shake it off, rub, rub some dirt in it, you know, like that's, that's kind of how, how, the, how the man type kind of typically handles a situation like that. And mom comes in and scoops the baby up and kisses the boo-boos and rubs it on, makes it all better and everything like that. There's two different roles, right? There's two different roles 
and how how parents um, respond to a situation like that. And maybe that's, I mean, that, that moves into, I mean, when you get into middle school, high school, it starts to go from scraped knee to more emotional issues that the mother is trying to uh, protect and, and nurture. And the father's like, no, deal with it, you know. And there's the mother, like, we need a mother to protect and nurture. But we also need a father to bring uh, security to a family as well. We need a father to bring uh, provision to a family. And when I say provision, I really, I mean, I, I kind of mean uh, financial and bring putting food on the table, that type of provision. But really what I mean is we need fathers to provide spiritually for their kids for their family to bring to to cultivate a good spiritual atmosphere in the house. And a lot of times we see a lot of times we see men just kind of push that onto their wives or onto someone else onto the youth pastor. <laughs> A lot of times, a lot of times we see, a lot of times we see the man just kind of push off that responsibility of providing spiritually for their household, being the head over their, over their household in the spiritual realm. And men, we need to, we need to take up that responsibility. That's, that's on us. That's on, that's on our shoulders to provide, not, not only to put Food on the table, but to provide that spiritual bread for our family, to put that type of bread on the table. Make sure that our kids understand the truths of the kingdom. That we're not leaving that to an hour, hour and a half on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night. Some of y'all are doing that. Some of y'all are, are only spiritually feeding your kids an hour a week. And that's not good. <laughs> Spiritual DSS is coming. That's not true. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but no. So, so the Lord's just showing me these things about, about the family unit and the parameters and the guidelines for what a... <coughs> What a healthy family looks like, for what a godly, for what a, a kingdom family, how it was designed to be, how it was designed to function. Just showing me these, I don't know, kind of fundamentals for how a family is supposed to be set up. And again, some, I mean, your, your family might be set up a little bit differently, and you, you might have different cards that were dealt, but... We don't want to pass that same hand onto our kids. We want to make sure that we, that we are passing on kingdom normals to the next generation. And so we have a husband and we have a wife, and they are in unity with each other. That's another kingdom principle for the family, unity with each other. So a lot of times we have, we have a husband and wife that are kind of struggling like this power struggle. Who's going to be right or who's going to get their way or I want to do this and you want to do that. And most of the time the wife wins because a happy wife, happy life and, you know, all of that, all of that stuff. And, and so, you know, there's, there's not necessarily a whole lot of, of unity going on. We want to have unity in, in our in our marriage, right? We want to have unity in, in the family. We want, we want to see that happen. But not just unity with each other where we're, we're both in agreement, but we want to have the Holy Spirit involved in our marriage. We want to have the Holy Spirit involved in the family so that there's unity not just with the husband and wife, but the husband and wife, that unit is also partnered with the Holy Spirit. And that's what you see in these, in these first, uh, first couple verses. It's kind of weird. Like it, it, seems like, it seems like this psalm like takes this weird change, like this 90-degree turn, you know, from uh, the, the Lord. If the Lord doesn't build the house, then 
it's built in vain and all of this stuff. And then all of a sudden we like turn and take a totally different direction to, uh, but having children is a gift from the Lord. You know, like that's a total, like where did that come from? But can you see how it, how it ties in here? Do you see how this all goes hand in hand? That raising a family, if you're not raising a family with the help of the Holy Spirit, partnered with the Holy Spirit, what are you doing? If you're not involving the Holy Spirit in, in your day-to-day life, in your marriage, and in your household, in your family, it's all for nothing. You can do the best that you think you can do, the best that you can do on your own, and it's not good enough. It's just not going to work. So we need to be partnered with the Holy Spirit. And I'm reminded often that I cannot be the best husband that I can be without the Holy Spirit. If I have the Holy Spirit on my side, if I'm constantly relying on the Holy Spirit, then I, can, I have so much more potential when it, comes to, when it comes to me and Mel. And she's going to like me a lot more if I am relying on, if I'm filled with the Spirit, if I'm walking in the Spirit, she's going to like me a lot more. And the same way, she cannot be the best wife that she can be, although she's an incredible wife. She is, in, she is awesome. But she cannot, she has so much more potential if she has the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's going to give you what you need to be the best husband that you can be, the best father that you can be. The Holy Spirit is the one that's going to give you the tools that you need to be the best wife and the best mother to your kids. Listen, you think that you know your kids, but you don't. I mean, you do because you, I mean... You know their likes, you know their dislikes for the most part, but I mean, do you know the number of hairs on their head? No. I mean, the Lord sees it all. The Lord sees the Lord sees all the struggles that they're going through. The Lord sees, I mean, he knows their personality. He knows their their makeup. He knows how he put them together. He knit them together in their mother's womb. He knows all of that stuff. He knows the plans that he has for them. And so you can do it on your own. But let me tell you, the Lord knows a whole lot more about what your kids are going through than you do. And the Lord knows a whole lot more about how to bring them through that than you do. And so the Holy Spirit's the one that's going to give you the tools that you need to parent your kids individually, uniquely for each one. And when I say parents, I mean, I know like some of y'all are checking out because, you know, maybe your kids are grown and gone or, or maybe you just don't have kids, you're not married or anything like that. But I mean, parenting, how many of you know parenting doesn't stop when your kids are grown and gone? You know, I mean, there's there's grandparents in the room. This grandparents count as parents, I would say. You know, that, that counts. There's future parents in the room. And the sooner that we learn these things, the sooner that we learn these kingdom principles, the better it's going to be when we do have kids. The Lord's teaching me these principles right now so that when I have kids, I can pass this on and I can pastor my kids. Did you know that y'all are pastors in your household? You're priests in your household, especially you men. You are priests in your household. I'm not, I'm not the pastor of your kids. I mean, I am, but you're, you are really pastoring your kids at home. And I just want to, I just want to make sure that you know that, that the Holy Spirit is empowering you to pastor your kids through everything that they're going through. So, then it goes on. It says in verse 4, it says, Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. Now that is a pretty cool scripture. That children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. That they're going to do damage for the kingdom of God. 
they're going to they're going to penetrate through the darkness if if it's done right so i um got a uh <clears throat> got a little bow and arrow for you yep here's my went out and got this bow and arrow and um So we're going to see, we're going to test these, uh, test these things out. So <coughs> this bow is a uh, Franklin, and it's really light, and it was very cheap. And these arrows are equipped with state-of-the-art suction cups. So let's let's take one of these things out here, and um, we got a target set up over there. Let's see um, let's see let's see how this let's see how this works. Hold on. Heather, <coughs> you um. You don't have to worry, because I don't think this thing can actually go that far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> da -da -da -da. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. It like hit the target, kind of. It was at the top, but it was it worked. And did you see that? It just boom ricocheted right off of there. Was that intimidating? <laughs> no, no, not not really. These um. These uh, little suction cup arrows um, don't really do a whole lot of damage. Um, and I noticed that a lot of you were just laughing at me when I pulled out my, when I pulled out my awesome bow. Um, but then we have a real bow. Now, when I, when, I think about, when I think about shooting an arrow, when I think about like what this scripture is saying, that, that children are, are like arrow in the, in the hands of a warrior, I think, wow, that's, that's, a, that's a powerful scripture. You know, that's, that's, um, that's, that's really something that I can really take a hold of, you know, and that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. But, I mean, when I really take a look at how this arrow flies, it's... Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty intense I think. <clears throat> so Michael, you set up. All right. Whenever uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead and fire away. Wow. <laughs> now. So, <coughs> would you say uh, would you say that that's effective? I think that's effective. I um I would not I would not want to stand in the way of that thing. I mean that thing went halfway. That arrow is halfway through this target. My arrow just bounced off. Um, it didn't. It didn't really do anything, and that target kind of laughed at it. In fact, um, we were having a little bit of fun uh, with this um, before service today, and Mel was kind of going around the house shooting at me with a with a bow and arrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this um, this thing right here is is this thing right here isn't very isn't very effective. You know, this this isn't really doing anything. Um, but you know. Your kids can either be effective weapons for the kingdom of God or they can be non-factors. And that's really the sobering truth. Even though they're grown up in church, even though they're, they know all these truths about God's word, all of these different things that are going on. Your kids can really be 
effective for the kingdom, where the kingdom of darkness kind of trembles. I mean, some of your faces were kind of trembling a little bit when Michael pulled out the real, real bow, not this little toy one. So the enemy can either laugh, like, what are you supposed to be doing? Who are you? Or they can tremble. You know, there's that, there's that scripture in the Gospels where the demon screams out, Man, I, I know Jesus. I know Paul. Who are you? That's who I want my kids to be. I want, I want my kids, I want, I want my kids to be known. I don't want my kids to be a non-factor. And I don't want your kids to be a non-factor. I don't want your kids to be ineffective. But instead, when we when we begin to cultivate a kingdom atmosphere in our house, when you begin to show your kids how to really walk out the truths of God's word, not just to know it up here, but how to walk it out on a daily basis in their schools, with their friends, every day when you do that, you're sharpening that arrow. Every day you do that, you're sharpening it more and more, and you're, you're honing that thing down, and it's getting more and more accurate to where when you send them out into the world, the kingdom of darkness better watch out. And that's really how this works. That's really how it works. When God said, be fruitful and multiply, I don't think he was saying be fruitful and multiply and really don't raise your kids, but just let them do whatever they want to. That's, that's, not, that's not it. But be fruitful and multiply the Holy Spirit that's in you. Pass that on to your kids. It's not, not just a biological multiplication, but there's spiritual multiplication that happens. That's what we really, that's what we really want to pass down. So how do we do that? How do, we, how do we raise our kids to be an effective weapon? And the first, you know, I just, there's several things that we can do. The, I have three things written down. The first thing we can do is don't allow worldly thinking or influence in your house. Don't allow it. We talked last Sunday with the youth about, about media, about um, the things that they're watching, the things that they're listening to, the, the things that they're allowing to influence their lives. We talked about that uh, last Sunday night and how <clears throat> if we are letting those things in, a lot of times we don't, we're not doing it intentionally, but we're being influenced by all of that stuff. We're not like sitting there thinking, I really want to let, I don't even remember who all those people were, but I looked up all the top 10 of like top 10 uh, music, like artists and, and everything like that. And I was like, I don't know any of these people. Like you want, you want to feel old? Like I didn't think I was old, but you want to feel old? You start, you start doing that. You start preaching a message on like who's like the, the billboard top 100, you know? Like I have no idea who these people are. But your kids do. Your kids know who they are. And without thinking, if they're not intentional, that's who's going to influence them. That's going to start influencing their behavior, their mind, how they're, how they're thinking. And we don't want to. We, we talked with the students, but this is more, even more on you to hold them accountable to this, not letting that stuff influence them. 
not letting that worldly thinking, that worldly influence into your house. Put your foot down. Don't be, don't be passive. Put your foot down. And don't just not allow it, but say, this is, this is why we're not going to listen to this. Because this stuff does not line up with the kingdom of God. And I want to, in my house, we're going to line up with the kingdom of God. In this house, this is what we're going to do. So the first thing, the first thing don't allow worldly thinking or influence in your house. Instead, cultivate an atmosphere of worship. You have that power and you have that responsibility to cultivate an atmosphere of worship in your house. The second thing, discipline. Discipline's a big one. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Father, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I mean, the Bible's filled with scriptures like that about, about discipline. Don't neglect discipline. But this day and age, I mean, people are neglecting that more and more. And by neglecting that more and more, We're not sharpening arrows. When we neglect the discipline, we're not sharpening arrows. Because we discipline, when we discipline, we're sharpening. When we discipline, we're showing this is where you're missing the mark, and here's where I want you to line up. This is where you're allowing the kingdom of darkness to rule. This is where you're, you're allowing um, these mistakes to happen. Here's where you need to be. And I want to bring you over here. And by doing that, I'm going to sharpen that arrow and make your, your children effective weapons in the kingdom of God. And the last thing, and I think this is really, really important, is to teach your kids how to pursue God. Teach your kids how to pursue God. That's more than, that's more than just doing a devotion, especially doing a devotion yourself and not bringing your kids into it at all. You know, like that's, that's good. And you want, you want a daily devotion. You want, you know, you, you, you want to, to be in the word and you want all of that. But if your kids don't know how to do that, if your kids aren't, if they don't understand that, that you're doing that, I mean, we want to, we want to teach our kids how to pursue God. And I, I understand that a lot of times that's awkward. I mean, if I'm being real, I remember as a teenager, that's awkward. <laughs> Talking to your kids about, about God. Me and Mel have this, uh, this line of thought that if you start young, it's not awkward when they get old. It's normal. Like, that's normal in our house. <clears throat> Starting young, talking about the things of God, even talking about what you're learning. What's God teaching you? Get a little bit, a little bit vulnerable about this is, what, this is what God's teaching me. Even at my age, even as your parent, as your leader, the Lord's still teaching me, and he's still molding me, and there's, there's things that I'm doing and the Lord wants to speak to you the same way. What's the Lord teaching you? Here's what God's teaching me. What's he telling you? What's he, what's he talking to you about? What did you read this week? Well, what did what, what the, what the Lord speak to you about that this week? Man, that's awesome. That's really cool. That's, that's the type of stuff. That's the type of practical application that sharpens arrows. So you go from meaningless suction cup toys to real effective weapons and that's what we want to do and so over the next who knows how long like I say we're going to start at the end of the month this is going to be my campaign to partner with you the parents to raise up weapons in the kingdom of God 
Is that good? Awesome. You all want to do that? You all want to do that with me? Even if you don't have kids in my area, even if you don't have kids right now, you still want to pledge that to raise up weapons for the kingdom. Awesome. Let's stand. Let's stand and let's, um, let's just kind of declare this before we go. As, as, we're, as we wrap up, you all want to declare this with me? Got three things that I want to declare. I'll say the first one, you repeat it after me. I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit in my house. I'm going to cultivate an atmosphere of worship in my house. And I'm going to join with Joshua in saying... And y'all know this. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? Is that good? Awesome. All right, guys, this week, put it into practice. Put it into practice. It's not going to, <coughs> it's going to take longer than three days or however long we have until Sunday. But let me, let me hear, let me hear some progress on Sunday. Is that good? Is that cool? Let me hear some progress. Start this week and y'all be good. All right. All right. We'll see you on Sunday.